The inclusion polymorphism that we get from inheritance is not the only type of polymorphism that we have. Uh, there's another form of universal polymorphism, something that allows us to work with an infinite number of types, called parametric polymorphism. This is actually something that you've seen, but you've seen it through the libraries. For example, when we create an array, and I'm going to make two of these, that's why I gave it the name Array1, and I pass it 1, 2, 3, note the type that came back. This is an array of ints. The square brackets here are holding a type parameter, and that's why this is called parametric polymorphism, is that there is a parameter here that specifies a type. So the array type can have whatever uh, different types associated with the contents, and it enforces that. Now, we can illustrate the importance of this by creating another array. Now this array, we're going to do something a little bit different. We are going to specify our own type. So here we let Scala's type inference figure out that this was a, an array of ints. Here we're saying we want this to be an array of any. Now remember, any is that type at the very top of the Scala type hierarchy, which can represent absolutely anything. So now my return value is an array of any. What's the difference there? Okay, so one thing is this actually absolutely enforces that this array can only store integers. As a result, I can take the sum. I cannot take the sum of that second array. Okay, and the reason is it says that it cannot convert the contents to a numeric type because it only allows you to do the sums of numeric types. But of course, everything in there is a numeric type but because it has this, the it is an array of any, that is not being enforced. And so to make this clear, let's point out that we can do some things that really we wouldn't want. You know, now it makes sense, since the array has one, two, or one true three. Well, clearly I can't take the sum of that. I could also do let's to take sub two and set that to be equal to a list of four, five, six. Now we have contents like this. I, it's not even clear what the sum would be for this. So this type parameter winds up being significant. Uh, it allows you to enforce what types can go inside of a collection like this. We're going to play a lot with these later on when we build our own collections, but we're going to first start off with kind of a, a simple example of where we can do this, how we can build, build a parametric type, and then we'll also look at parametric functions because the you can put type parameters both on whole classes at, or, or traits as well as on the methods or functions that you declare.